So the Red Magic 5G has a Snapdragon 865 processor, 144 hertz AMOLED display, and the possibility of charging up to 55 watts. Now those are great specifications. The question is, how did Nubia do the implementation? My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains today. I'm going to give you my full review of the Red Magic 5G. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So Red Magic is a gaming phone brand from Nubia. Nubia is a sub-brand of ZTE or ZTE, depending on where you are in the world. And these gaming phones typically offer things like high performance, fast displays, big batteries, uh, some kind of cooling, active cooling, and gaming triggers. Now, the Red Magic 5G is a successor to the Red Magic 3S, which I reviewed at the end of last year. It also had high performance gaming triggers and a 90 hertz display. Now, the 5G has bumped that up to 140. 44 hertz display adds a triple camera setup and also has now got an in-screen fingerprint reader so as a gaming phone the red magic 5g comes with an impressive set of specs including a snapdragon 865 a 6.65 inch display with corning gorilla glass 144 hertz as i've said at least 8 gigabytes of ram 12 gigabytes on some models a 4500 milliamp hour battery 8K video recording, an in-screen fingerprint reader, and active liquid cooling. Now, the Red Magic 5G has four important gaming-specific features. First of all, the 144Hz display. Most phones come with a 60Hz display, which means they refresh the pixels on the screen 60 times a second. Some phones now also come with 90Hz displays. And if you go really high-end, maybe you'll get 120Hz display. But the Red Magic 5G got 144Hz display, which really does raise it above the madding crowd. Secondly, there is the liquid cooling, which basically means there's a fan and some kind of cooling system inside, which the idea is that you can play games for longer without the device overheating. Thirdly, there are those gaming triggers. These are on the side of the device so that when you put it into landscape mode, they're on the top and you can use your index fingers to actually play the games and those buttons can be mapped anywhere onto the screen. And lastly, the Red Magic 5G includes a dedicated game mode. There's a switch that you switch on the bottom of the device, and that switches you from the normal Android launcher into the game mode launcher, which brings gaming front and center. When you look at the design of the Red Magic 5G, it certainly screams at you, I'm a gaming phone. From the lines on the design on the back of the device, from the metal chassis, from the grills for the active cooling, everything about it says, I am a gaming phone. Now that means that you may like it or you may not like it because it has that particular quality and that particular industrial look maybe is the right word that says I'm here to play games and of course because it's got a 6.65 inch screen it's quite big and it's quite heavy not as heavy as say the S20 Ultra from Samsung however it is certainly quite heavy at 218 grams the back of the device is quite distinctive, as I have said. There is the triple camera setup, and there's also a couple of logos and some wording that actually have LED lighting underneath them, and you can control those in software to kind of do breathe patterns and fade and flashing and all kind of things like that. So is the Red Magic 5G any good for gaming? Well, obviously you've got the Snapdragon 8 at 65, you've got that 144 hertz display, and you've got the gaming mode that brings everything front and center. You can control options like the uh, fan on and off, like the LED lights, and you can configure the shoulder gaming buttons. Now the gaming buttons are a really interesting addition. Basically they can be mapped to anywhere on the screen, and then when you're playing a game, you can just tap the button, and it's the same as if you were tapping the screen. So for an example, in a game like uh, Asphalt 9, you've got the drift button and the nitro button, and you can map those to those two points on the screen. And then when you tap the shoulder triggers, you are doing the same as tapping the nitro button or the, uh, the drift button. Now, there are only a limited number of games that support 90 hertz and 120 hertz displays, but that number of games, of course, is increasing all the time. But the important thing here is not to confuse frame rate with refresh rate. Refresh rate is how fast electronically the display is updated. So how quickly those pixels are turned on and off just by the display itself. 
And what happens 144 times a second, the display processor with the display will update the pixels. Now, if there's nothing changed, it will update to exactly the same pixels. So imagine if you were looking at a photo in the gallery, you're gonna see the same pixels updated 144 times a second, but nothing has actually changed. Now, when you're playing a game, you want a frame rate, which means the game, the GPU and the CPU are able to generate different frames at a higher frame rate than 60 frames a second, 90 or 120 frames a second. And only when you're using those types of games will you actually get any kind of benefit from having 144 hertz display. Now, if you want to know more about this, I have another video here on this channel called 90 hertz displays, surface flinger and display processors. And I will link to that in the description below. Now, of course, in terms of gameplay, you won't be disappointed. This is a leading class uh, processor inside this phone. You've got a good memory and storage combination. So games like Fortnite and Call of Duty and PUBG and Critical Ops and all those kind of things will play without any problems whatsoever. For those of you into benchmarks, this device scored 933 on Geekbench 5 for the single core score, 3160 for the multi core score. Then, when we get over to 3D Mark for Slingshot Extreme OpenGL ES 3.1, it scored 7248. One interesting thing is, though, is that while I was running 3D Mark, not in game mode, the fan came on automatically, which means the device was actually monitoring to see when a benchmark was running and then turned on the fan, which personally I find a tiny, tiny bit sinister. The Red Magic 5G comes with built-in active cooling, the idea being that the fan is able to keep the CPU and GPU cooler, which means it can run at a more sustained performance for longer periods of time. Unfortunately, the effectiveness of the fan is hard to actually quantify. For example, I ran Geekbench, got the numbers I just talked about a moment ago, then did 3D gaming for 30 minutes, intensive 3D gaming without the fan on, and then ran Geekbench again, and there was a 5% drop in the Geekbench score. After the device had cooled down, I repeated exactly the same experiment, but this time during the 3D gaming, I had the fan running. And then when I ran Geekbench at the end of 30 minutes, actually the scores had dropped by 4%. So 4% with the fan, 5% without the fan, really not very conclusive. In terms of audio, the Red Magic 5G has a front firing speaker where the earpiece is and a down firing speaker on the bottom. However, that still does give you a good stereo effect when you are holding the phone in kind of landscape mode. Of course, your hand can block that bottom speaker. The good news is there is a headphone jack. And so if you do want to get the best out of the stereo separation in things like uh, YouTube or in gaming, then of course you can use use headphones. In terms of battery life, I found that you can play 3D games, intensive 3D games for about five hours on one charge of the Red Magic 5G. And at the other end of the scale, you could do media watching, let's say YouTube for around 14 hours. So 14 hours, five hours. So if you're doing a mixture of things, let's say some gaming, watching some movies, doing some social media stuff, then you really will get a full day of use on one charge of the battery. Now this was all running at 144 Hertz and switching to 60 Hertz should theoretically increase the battery life. However, during my testing, I found that I still got the same numbers even when running in 60 Hertz. In the box, you'll find an 18 watt fast charger, which can take the phone from zero to 50% in 40 minutes. If you want a larger top up, it will go from zero to 80% in 68 minutes. And for a full charge, you'll need about an hour and a half. Now the phone does support up to 55 watt fast charging, but you have to buy a separate charger for that. So one of the weaknesses of the Red Magic 3S was the fact it had a single camera that has been fixed with the Red Magic 5G as it comes with a triple camera setup. However, it's not a normal triple camera setup. For example, you have the 64 megapixel main shooter, that's a Sony IMX 686. And then the second uh, sensor is not actually a zoomed in sensor. It is an eight megapixel ultra wide 
uh, lens and sensor setup. And then the third one, again, is not zoomed. It's actually a macro uh, uh, sensor. So you've actually got a two megapixel macro sensor, an eight megapixel ultra wide, and then a 64 megapixel main shooter. Overall, the photos are okay. They're not bad, but neither are they spectacular. And the camera app needs some work done on it. For example, you can't switch to the eight megapixel ultra wide sensor from within inside the main UI. You need to go into pro mode and then switch to it there. And also the inclusion of a two megapixel macro sensor is a bit odd. I don't know many gamers that go around taking macro photos. Now, when you do use it, it is an interesting idea. It doesn't have autofocus, so you have to focus in manually, but by moving the camera, back and forth moving the phone back and forth however there is focus peaking which means you do tell when it actually is in focus however I think it would have been better to include a 2x zoom or 3x zoom rather than a macro camera the camera app also has a built-in night mode for taking pictures in low light and I was presently surprised on how well that actually worked in terms of video, the device sports 8K video recording, which is certainly a plus feature for this device at 30 frames a second. However, the camera app does advise you that it's still best to use this outdoors, which would imply to me that the ISO can get very noisy when recording at 8K. However, if you want to record at 4K or at 1080p, you can do both of those at 60 frames a second, and you have a choice between H.264, H.265, and HDR10. There is also a built-in portrait mode on the rear camera, which does work fairly well considering the advances now in computational photography. It's meant to also exist on the front-facing camera. However, my shots showed that it actually didn't make any uh, difference to the overall result whatsoever. Now we have to come to the bit where I say the things I don't really like about the Red Magic 5G. Some of them are minor, some of them are the fact it just shows that the details haven't really been worked on, and some of them are pretty major. So first of all, let's say an example that there is no way to display the battery percentage in the status bar. Now, that's a minor thing. There's not actually even a battery menu anywhere in the settings, so you can't look at the battery usage at all. I ended up installing a third party app so that I could see at least the battery percentage in the status bar. But this lack of the battery information is kind of an, in, uh, an indication of the rough edges that you find with the software that comes with the Red Magic 5G. Now, it did come with Android 10. It comes, of course, with the Google Play Store, all of the Google services. It had the March 2020 security update on it. However, I thought I would start up again the Red Magic 3S that I reviewed at the end of the last year to see what updates had come in the last few months since I reviewed that device. And guess what? There were none whatsoever, zero updates. Now, I did uh, reach out to Nubia and ask them about this and they said that there are planned updates for the 3S. However, the problems with the uh, pandemic and the problems in China meant that they weren't able to do that. And they did say that they wanted to remedy that for the 3S and also for the 5G going forward, there would be updates. I guess only time will tell if they actually do that. One thing that is particularly bad on the Red Magic 5G is the in-screen fingerprint reader. It's uh, frustrating to use at best. Uh, you try to register a fingerprint, maybe it takes four or even five attempts before you can get it to work. Seems to have a problem when you get to the phase where you have to use the edge of your finger. Seems to be very, very uh, uh, fussy about registering that fingerprint. Again, I reached out to Nubia. They said they're working on new software. They're working with the fingerprint reader manufacturer to get the best optimal performance. That software isn't out yet. Again, we will see whether they do actually manage to fix that. Now, for me, the biggest deal breaker with the Red Magic 5G is you can't change the default launcher. A lot of people like Android because of the freedoms you get, which includes being able to change over to your favorite launcher. Nubia have intentionally blocked the changing of the default uh, launcher. I spoke to them about this and they said that is their decision and that is how it's going to be. You cannot change the default launcher. Because of that, I was unable to run Speed Test G on this device because it is itself a launcher as it launches those apps one after the other to actually test out the overall system performance. So for me, that is a big thumbs down and I certainly personally would not buy a phone that I cannot change the launcher. 
So the Red Magic 5G is a good gaming device. You've got that 144 hertz display. You've got the hardware trigger buttons on the side. It's got a mediocre camera. The software is a bit rough around the edges. You can't change the default launcher. So there are pros and cons on both sides. Now, in terms of pricing, the model with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage will cost $579, which is €579 Euros or £539, and the model with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of internal storage will cost €649, €649 Euros or £599. So for under $600, you can get a Snapdragon 865 device with active cooling, 144Hz display, shoulder trigger buttons, and all the other things that I've talked about, which is a pretty good price. However, there are other devices worth checking out, including the Black Shark 3 and whatever comes after the Asus ROG Phone 2, which will probably be called the Asus ROG Phone 3. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos with them, why not subscribe to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.